when we moved here, we got involved. And we actually invited ourselves to some people. For, when we went to church, we invited ourselves to some people's home, invited them back to us. It was, we were, we were not shy. Whether you're in a small town or a large city, volunteering is a must. And you can, and the person can cho choose to decide how much they want to volunteer or how little they want to volunteer. <laughs> Hello, I am Celia Sanka, Executive Director of the Diversity Canada Foundation, and this is the Golden Years Fireside Chat, brought to you by Diversity Canada, the organization behind goldenvoices.com, the website where seniors gather to meet and uh, focus on issues that are importance, of importance to seniors. Today, we are very pleased to have as our guests the WISMATS, Natalie and Hans, and they will be joining us to speak about a very important topic, and that is uh, making big changes as seniors moving from one place to another and um, adjusting to such a big move. Sometimes seniors are reluctant to make such a move, but the WISMATs have done so and uh, uh, they can share a lot of insights onto how to manage and handle a big change, a big life change like that. So welcome, Natalie and Hans. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Thank to be you. here. <laughs> yes, that's great. So um, as we start, give us a, a very brief um, background of yourselves and um, where you're from and what you did before retirement. Okay, we moved to Elliott Lake. It'll be four years in, in October. Um, we moved from Vancouver, 40 years in Vancouver. Our children were born there. We were married there. Um, we had a mortgage on our condo and decided we wanted to retire and in order to eliminate the mortgage we decided to sell and move elsewhere. In the meantime I connected with a school. For, I grew up in Niagara Falls. My husband is from Germany and uh, connected with a school friend and she said then when we retired we decided to do a road trip across Canada. We got as far as Halifax. and. Uh, on the way here, we did stop in Elliott Lake. We saw the price of housing and thought, oh my goodness, we've hit the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> we sold our condo for four times what we bought it for and uh, bought this beautiful townhouse here in Elliott Lake and we're very happy with it. And um, money to burn, what can I say? <laughs> my husband hates it when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> but wow, yes, I think we hit the jackpot coming to Elliott Lake. I missed the snow for 40 years in Vancouver. I, I grew up with the snow, hated it then, but missed it in Vancouver. Whenever it snowed, I was ecstatic. And it snowed maybe five or six times in the last 10 years. Anyway, that's basically it. We have one son still in Vancouver. I have a sister in BC. And our youngest son took uh, studied law in Toronto and has now uh, passed the bar. So we do have family here. I have my, our youngest son here and my, I have a cousin in Oakville. And yeah, it's going on four years. I uh, just want to um, uh, get clear when you say you have uh, one son here, you mean in the province or in the city itself of Elliott Lake where you are now? Practicing law in Orangeville, the youngest son, our youngest son. We didn't exactly go to territory, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's not like him moving from Germany to Canada, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, actually, that was one of the, the points, and I, I will I want to um, come to that and uh, go into that a little bit more. But uh, just the idea that you moved from uh, thousands of miles away from Vancouver to Elliott Lake, and um, although your family, one son is in the province of Ontario, the other son is in the province of BC, that's 
far away on the other side of the country. Uh, as seen as you're in Elliott Lake. Um, now, that's one of the reasons why many seniors are reluctant to make a move in retirement, and that's because, uh, you know, the one senior described it as golden chains. They're golden oh. chains in that, uh, <laughs> yes, their family, their children, their grandchildren, they um, they feel locked into whatever city they were at the time of, of retirement and um, they feel unable to, to move. Um, but for you, you, you are happy and beaming four years now in Elliott Lake. So um, from your perspective and from your experience, um, it's not uh, an, a hurdle that cannot be overcome in terms of as it was expressed by another senior, those golden chains, those golden ties that may keep someone in in a place. Tell us a, a bit more about that, being able to maintain those uh, family bonds, even though the place for you for retirement is not the place where your kids or grandkids or whatever may be. Yes. Uh, well, I'm not sure how to answer that, but, um, well, the world is such a small place now. I mean... It takes me longer to drive to Toronto than it takes for our son and his wife to fly to to Toronto from Vancouver. It's about the same length. Four and a half hour flight, six hour drive to to Toronto to see our other son, or Orangeville. So we, and, and he has family in, in Germany. I have a sister and a brother in Germany. So the world is uh, is very small now. You can, you can go to Paris for coffee and come home for dinner. I mean, <laughs> That's how we see the world. We we were never locked in. We've traveled a lot uh, in our 40 years of marriage, and uh, we welcome the world. We, I volunteer here for palliative care. I'm on the hospital auxiliary, um, and I, I do I help seniors do their taxes in March and April. Been doing that now for four years, and uh, you have to when we moved here, we got involved. And we actually invited ourselves to some people. For, when we went to church, we invited ourselves to some people's home, invited them back to us. It was we were we were not shy, definitely not shy. <laughs> I don't know if that comes with age, but um, yeah, totally. <laughs> and it and it worked in our it's worked in our favor totally. Yes, that that sounds fantastic. So that you established. Um, you kept those ties because you could travel, as you say, and uh, you established new ties. So tell me, Hans, uh, you're originally from Germany. Is the fact that you uh, moved from one country to another uh, at uh, you know some point in your life, in your younger years, would that have been a factor in making you comfortable with moving from the place that you lived in for 40 years and retiring to somewhere totally different. Hmm? For me, it's okay because my wife said she grew up in uh, Niagara Falls anyway, and then I said, okay, I'm here from Germany and I have no background on family here in Canada, so, and she has a background here in Ontario, so I said, okay, I'm getting along, let's see what's, what's coming up. <laughs> And then when we arrived here, so I said, it's not too bad, it's a nice little town, it's beautiful, and then we made friends, and now we're playing cards every week together, and uh, so I'm, it took me it maybe a while until I really adjusted to Elliot Lake because of the big city, to the smaller city, everything, when you needed something, you had everything around the corner in Vancouver and here you you need something bigger you have to drive two hours <laughs> to Sudbury but otherwise uh, it's beautiful here the weather is nice it's uh, I can't I, I miss nothing and I, I like it that my son is in Toronto or, the, or the now in uh, Orangeville. Orangeville and he phones once a while and then he comes for a weekend up here and stays with us for a weekend so the connection is there, and 
Our oldest son is coming now in August from Vancouver, he's flying here and we meet all together again. So I'm happy. <laughs> Sounds good. And, and what about technology? What role does technology play in uh, making it easy to make that move from uh, where you were originally to where it's, you find it's best for you in retirement in terms of keeping those bonds as strong as possible? Yeah, I mean, technology is, is everything. Like right now, we are on Zoom with you. So and we are, we've been on Zoom with other people before. And then you have the internet, you have the email, you have, uh, the phones, I mean, yeah. the phones, everything is, I mean, you're there. You're, you're not apart. You talk with, even with Germany we talk, and the uh, <coughs> connection is, and then you have WhatsApp, where you can connect right away there too. So, <coughs> I think there is, can be better right now. Yeah. When you made the move, that's a, a, a very, very big distance you traveled from Vancouver to Elliott Lake. Um, and you mentioned that you did have a chance to stop off. So would you say that's something that is necessary for any senior who's contemplating moving for uh, retirement to first visit their potential or their their prospective new home or retirement uh, city or town or village? Yeah, yeah, I remember as far back as 2015, I was at Curves on a Saturday morning and there were, and Vancouver is very expensive. I think everyone knows that. And that two or three ladies started talking, oh, we can't live here anymore. We want to retire. Uh, one lady said she's moving to Saskatchewan. Another lady said she's moving up north. And I think that got the ball rolling. So I made this connection on classmates with a, with a school friend of mine. We decided to do a road trip here. And yes, it, 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 uh, it was the drive-through here that convinced us. Then we did some, some internet searches and it said Elliott Lake is comparable to Parksville on Vancouver Island, two retirement communities. And I know some of our friends in Vancouver, that was their goal to go to Parksville. I, I'm fearful of islands, I don't know, <laughs> water surrounded and, and, and you know they do say Vancouver or BC will have this tremendous earthquake, they don't know when but it's guaranteed to happen. So, um, so I had a little bit of angst or angst there. And then um, yeah, coming through Elliott Lake, it, as I said, it was a surprise, it, uh, it, was, it, was, it was wonderful, just wonderful. The houses and the people were, were awesome. It was an it was um it was like coming home for me maybe because I grew up in yeah. Niagara Falls. I know when I got my license here they said, ah everybody comes back to Van to Ontario. Everybody comes home again. So it, it must happen quite a bit, I assume. I mean Ontario is the epicenter of Canada. Let's face it. <laughs> Yes, um, although the people in Quebec may disagree with that. <laughs> yeah, well, oh dear, yeah. You can, you can raise that part. <laughs> I'm not because of Ottawa, I don't know. I mean, we have three times the population of BC, so you do feel it. BC is beautiful. I mean, uh, I know people in, in Germany were upset that we moved here because they ha like to have this connection to this world city where the 2010 Olympics were. and and the, the, the prestige of living in, living in Vancouver and who, what's Elliot Lake for the newly wed and nearly dead, we heard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which part, where we belong. <laughs> they used to say that about Victoria, BC, yeah. but not anymore. And I think we're growing. At least I see the, the housing prices have almost doubled from four years ago and there's hardly any um, vacancies, so. We must be growing. So in making the move, uh, again, that was a pretty big move from uh, Vancouver to Elliott Lake. Um, for seniors, the, the actual physical effort that's required to make a move, um, you know, packing up, getting rid of uh, stuff, selling stuff, giving it away, and then uh, packing the van, 
moving to the new city and uh, finding a home and yes yeah. yes yeah. Um, how manageable is that would you say in your experience as a senior a lot of planning in fact i i retired in 2016 uh, that's when we did our road trip here we returned in march of 2017 2017 yes yeah and in uh, may of 2017 we put our condo up for sale and um uh, then we moved in the um, yeah, end of September. So my, my son, our son, our youngest son, then got accepted by Osgood Hall. So my husband helped him move, went in his car, drove to Toronto. Oh, I stayed Toronto. behind. My boss called me back to work uh, for summer relief at the German Canadian Care Home. That's where I worked in Vancouver. Anyway, so you drove here with Martin. Yes and uh, helped him set up in us in uh, Toronto and then you drove here and stayed with uh, my high school friend or school friend and looked at that yeah looked for four days or were you here a week? I looked for the houses because we saw it yeah. on the internet, internet but I said I would like to see the house really and try yeah. to walk in and see what whatever it is and then I found the house where we are now and I said Natalia, this is the house for us. We can move here. Also a condo, right? Also a, a no a townhouse. Townhouse, okay. And it's uh, everything done. I ha I don't have Moving to start any work yeah. right now. So we come up here and we move right away in. So just let the mover do all the work. But they hit the sprinkler in Vancouver and everything turned with water in oh, our yeah. we have condo. A few night a that few was a nightmare. Then we had to go for the insurances and I think that was yeah. a stress on his egg, uh, on his side egg stuff. <laughs> yeah, the last piece of furniture out of our condo in, in Port Coquitlam actually, it's 45 minutes uh, outside of Vancouver, but we both worked in Vancouver. Anyway, so the sprinkler hit, the, the movers hit the sprinkler and set off the alarm and the place flooded. So the, the, the person that bought it, the gentleman that bought it actually wanted to renege, but then he decided, well, everything is going to be new, new carpeting, new everything. So it was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> but apparently it took four months for them to do all that, which is what we heard. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, not, uh, not the way we wanted to leave, but, um, uh, it but had, yeah. Yeah, it helped. <laughs> <laughs> so even though it was a stressful uh, situation. It's not something that uh, if another senior f feels, yes, uh, yes, it's not insurmountable. Yes, that's that's good to know. So um, you mentioned that when you came here uh, and you you invited yourself in to, uh, over to dinner to, to some people. Tell me a bit more about adjusting to a new place and how easy it is to um, become one with the community. If there are old timers here that uh, you have to um, gel with. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we first of all joined the church here, joined church and, and um, made the connection there. The, the school friend I have here, uh, we decided to meet every week for cards, playing cards. Uh, so that was one activity. Then we started with the dinners, my place, your place, our place. And uh, it just grew from that. And then I, I joined palliative care and I joined the hospital auxiliary through the school friend here. And, um, and it just grew from there. We met through his uh, yeah. school friend, other friends. Other friends, yes. Yeah, a, a, so. German friend, uh, a German friend, our German speaking from your area. He was, he's from Munich, and you're from uh, 90 kilometers away from Munich. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah it just it just continued to grow. And uh, volunteering is a big part of my. I never thought I'd volunteer. I just thought, no, if I don't get paid for it, I'll, I'll never do. <laughs> but I love it. I love it, and. And my job in my last job in Vancouver was in a care home. I was in the office. I was the executive assistant to the CEO, and that job actually I'm now paying forward in my volunteering because I'm familiar. The hospital here is fantastic. I, I can't say enough about it. And uh, yeah, so the, 
that experience, 10 years in the care home, has allowed me to be comfortable in, in my surroundings here. I mean, we're, this, is, this is our future. I mean, we are, the future is now for us. <laughs> you can only look back or, you know, stay in the, or like the present. I mean, the future is basically, uh, we hope to be grandparents one day. Our, our oldest son in Vancouver was married two, year, two years ago. We drove there again to the wedding. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I'm going to be homesick. I wasn't. I didn't miss the traffic. I didn't miss the noise. Um, I mean, it, we were happy to be tourists, but I didn't miss any of that. I wanted to buy some shoes for the wedding, and it, uh, <laughs> the only my, the shoe that I wanted was only available in North Vancouver. It took us an hour and a half to get there, a half hour drive on a Saturday. And I said, no, I don't miss this. Everything here is so... Oh, you Five forget. minutes. <laughs> we, we go shopping, we forget something, we just hop in the car and we're there in two minutes. It's lovely. I don't... I sometimes miss the... Mo I'm now through COVID, I miss shopping, but I didn't miss it when when we first moved here. Yeah. Saved us a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, and now we're doing online shopping, which we did very little of in Vancouver. So um, it's an adventure. That's how we see it. It's an adventure. Wonderful. So uh, one uh, thing that uh, is a, a big concern, especially for someone moving from the West Coast over to uh, Ontario, is the weather. In terms of handling the weather from, uh, in this case, from BC to Elliott Lake and if someone is in southern Ontario they have a different type of weather uh, to us here in northern Ontario. For seniors how big of a consideration uh, is that or is it something that seniors can uh, feel comfortable that they can adjust to as well from your experience? We've had two nasty winters. The last one was very mild but the two winters before that were nasty. Uh, the nice thing about it is that we just step out of our front door and we're in our car. So, but falling was a, was a big fear of mine. I mean, there, uh, when I went to the Wren Center to do, to, to, do the, to the yoga class there, I mean, I've had moments where I thought, oh my gosh, I really did come here to die. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because falling is one of the biggest, uh, seniors are prone to that. And um, anyway, didn't happen, thank God. And uh, yeah, the winters, those two winters were very nasty. We actually thought the roof was going to cave in. I know the condo here, when, you have a, when you're in a condo, they will, you know, the community collects together and uh, to uh, pay for the removal of snow on the roof. Anyway, uh, yeah, there were... And uh, people, when before we moved here, they said, "Oh, have you? Are you aware of the black flies? Yada yada yada." Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, you deal with it. <laughs> you deal with it. Hasn't been a big problem, no. Not but too bad. No. Those uh, two winters, nineteen and twenty, were pretty. But you know, interesting. I like it when it rains here. It really pours. In Vancouver, there's always that mist. Um, but I, I love the weather here. I love the thunderstorms. Never get thunderstorms in Vancouver. Maybe once in 40 years. Um, no, I like the weather. It's interesting. It's really interesting. Oh, I'm happy that you it's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you actually enjoy shoveling snow. Oh, I yeah. Because <laughs> he's always doing it before the snow remover, before the, you know, the people come to... It's already done. <laughs> so... Different lifestyle. I don't know. I don't know what uh, how much we're going to enjoy the winters in future. But right now, I have no objections. We're both in our seventies, so the winter is no barrier. It's again, it's not an insurmountable hurdle that uh, that people face. No. Oh, we have a nice skier here. I can go skiing. Yeah, he's a good skier. So it's a little bit exercise there, so it's fine. And that's, that's an interesting point and uh, something I want to expand on. In terms of 
what someone should look for in the ideal retirement setting. Uh, maybe someone is in a, a big city where the budget can only take care of um, uh, just the rent and um, a little bit for for meals um, for you and maybe uh, in your experience this may resonate with other seniors who are considering moving for their retirement so that they enjoy their best retirement what were the key points or the key aspects of a beautiful retirement setting or place where you retired. Elliot Lake has two beautiful beaches, gorgeous. I mean, why would you? <laughs> we went to used to go to Mexico every January for our anniversary, and we have two beaches here. They're lovely. Um, he was, uh, yeah, you were excited to see the ski hill. I mean, it doesn't compare to Whistler, but it's it's good <laughs> enough. But it's good for exercise. <laughs> it's good enough. Yeah, uh, we haven't proceed. Our friends uh, that we play cards with, they. Um, they're ATVers. We haven't pro we haven't progressed to that stage yet. Skidooing. I did that when I was growing up in um, in Niagara Falls. Haven't done that yet. But I mean, the nature here is is wonderful. And being in BC, you're very um, how should I say? You, you you're well aware that you're in nature and in a beautiful area. Uh, and I think we we have yeah. that here too. So. I don't miss too much. I mean, the mountains are beautiful, but having grown up in Niagara Falls, I miss the trees more. We have a backyard that's on a green belt, so I'm happy. And the mountains are beautiful, but you know, after 40 years, you don't even see them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're driving to work, it's, you know, the day-to-day -day routine takes over. Yeah, and uh, yeah. now we can take the scenery and maybe more than in Vancouver, yeah. The final question is in terms of uh, living in a retirement community as opposed to living in a city with, um, you know, more variety in terms of more working people, a larger school population. Uh, how does it compare and is one better than the other for retirees? No, well, it's based on personal preference. Um, we, I think the fit here might be better for seniors because, but I mean, in, in Vancouver, there was, you know, there things were being done for seniors. Having worked in a care home for 10 years, almost 10 years, um, it's... I, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I, I just think we fit better in here because Elliot Lake is geared towards the seniors. The only thing is, is for shopping, you know, if you want to go shopping a little bit nicer and have to you use Costco or whatever, so you have to drive. Or even mm -hmm. for my car, for the Volkswagen, here's no Volkswagen dealer. You have to go to Sudbury if I have to have a... But then it's a, and it's a trip, it's a road trip. It's, oh, yeah. You look okay. forward to it. So a road trip. <laughs> you can go a nice dinner. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love what you said because that I think what you just said, Natalie, that uh, embodies exactly why this has been a beautiful experience for you. Because rather than seeing it as a challenge and a negative and something to be complaining about, it's a joyous experience having to go out of town to get to the car dealer um, to get your, the car repaired or to do shopping by the approach uh, and by the view that you have of everything, uh, you can take on whatever challenge with a smile. Like in the city, you're, you're oversaturated. You're almost, it's almost too much. You know, you've got your, you've got your agenda every day and it's like you have to keep up. Here you can take, it's more paced. You can pace yourself, you can... Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, we're retired. No, yeah, actually, we can pace ourselves. <laughs> but I mean, our son from Orangeville loves coming here. He's going to probably come on the long weekend next week or the week after, and he likes it here. He, it, 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 it's nice to relax yeah, for him here. It brings know? his yeah. stress level down, because as a lawyer, he works 60 hours a week, and 
Love to hear. Wonderful. So um, those were the areas that I wanted to cover. Is there anything that uh, um, anything else that you'd like to add that can uh, inspire or uh, give some insight to someone who is at the point? maybe not yet retired, but considering retirement and wondering whether, if not Elliot Lake itself, some other place uh, would be good for them, but a little leery about making a move at this age in their advanced years. Well, this is our forever home. We, we, we did plan it. I mean, we planned every single step. We, we didn't have any illusions about coming here. Um, actually, through COVID and, and all that, it's actually been a blessing to be here. I'm glad we weren't in the big cities. They were, they're in trouble. I mean, they, they just, LA Lake was a blessing. I was very happy to be here. Never more grateful yeah. than in the last two years when uh, COVID hit. So, I mean, the move here, it's like we moved here because not everybody, even, even in Vancouver, when we lived there, not everybody is a millionaire there, even when we sold and had to pay our mortgage back and everything, so what was left over, we had to come here and find a house. Sure, if somebody has more money or is a little bit richer, so he maybe can go afford closer, go maybe to Sudbury or go in there. Even Sudbury or Sault Ste. Marie is a nice area, so mm -hmm. for people who want to retire there, Sault Ste. Marie be close to the American borders, by the way, there. So it's so how people see it and how the money is affected in, in the move. So Elliot Lake is affordable, definitely. Yeah. 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 Yes, that's uh, um, a key point. Uh, once you are in a place that's affordable, then your retirement fixed income can go further and you can enjoy life. You can enjoy your retirement without worrying what the bills will be like every month. Great. So thank you so much, Natalie and Hans, for sharing your experience in uh, moving as seniors, as retirees to Elliott League. We love having you as part of the community. And uh, uh, we appreciate the time that you've spent with us today. Okay. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are looking at the topic of moving and starting over as a senior. And I'm really delighted to be speaking with Sharon Wood on this issue because uh, Sharon is a very uh, special, dear um, resident of Elliott Lake, very dear to Diversity Canada and to me personally. Uh, and she can tell us a lot about moving and starting over because she's so much of a part of Diversity Canada and you'd never know that she is very new to the community. So Sharon, how long have you been uh, in Elliott Lake? It'll be uh, two years, August 29th. Okay, and how long had you been in Elliott Lake before you had your first contact with Diversity Canada? It was the fall of 2019 when I met you at the fair, the Fairness Well Centre or fair or something like that, yeah. The wellness fair, yes. Yeah, and there were, you asked if you want, if I wanted to be interviewed. Yes. And I said yes, and then it started from there and took off from there. We were doing a seniors memories project where we interviewed seniors to um, put together a, um, a recording of seniors memories of their families growing up etc so you had just come to Elliott Lake and you were ready already out and participating so um, we, I want to talk a little bit more about that as we go along but uh, generally the topic of moving and starting over as a senior um, on that subject we've had some seniors say that you know, I'm too old to move to a new place. I'm too um, set in my ways in this particular city or this particular town. Moving is for the young people. Uh, that's not for me. But for you, that's not the case at all, is it? 
most people don't like change so most people will come up an excuse with excuse to not move because they don't like change um, it took me um, it took me it was uh, 2015 when I checked out Elliot Lake so it took me five years in the making to get up here and because um, I was working the time I was working in Burnaby BC full-time and uh, so then I checked out um, Elliot Lake and but I wasn't ready because I was like I said I was working still and then in May the end of May 1st of June I came up in uh, 2019 uh, checked it out. I liked it. Got my apartment. Moved up August, and here I am. So, as uh, um, someone who is golden, I I'm, I'm shifting away from saying senior to describing those who are 50 plus as golden. So, as uh, someone who is golden, what were some of the considerations that? came to mind as you were thinking of moving that may be different to what you know younger individuals would have well I can only speak for myself uh, when I spotted them in the magazine Zoomer magazine about Elliot Lake um, economical reasons is why I moved up to Elliot Lake because everything in I lived in Toronto and Vancouver and New West the big cities and the cost of living is way too high so you know, like I said, 12, 2015, I checked it out, and um, you know, I liked what I saw, and I said, just you know, so I put it on the back burner until I was ready, and that's how it all that's how it all started. Yes, and you know, uh, in speaking with not only seniors uh, but also advisors like financial advisors, etc., uh, one of the things that they highlight is that. Where we choose to live has a big, big impact on the quality of our retirement because you can be living in a big city where the cost of housing eats away 50% of your budget and then you have to struggle with all of the other expenses. So um, that, that sounds like a pretty wise decision, especially thinking of the West Coast, BC, that's the most expensive part of Canada to live in. Well, Toronto, uh, Toronto, Ontario is pretty close second, but I mean, yes, it does have. Uh, it was a big factor in moving up to Elliot Lake was the cost like I could afford. I couldn't afford a, a one bedroom apartment in either of the cities I lived in, and therefore, you know, I'm living in a two bedroom apartment, and uh, it's a lot cheaper now uh, for someone. Uh, a golden individual who is looking to move to some place that would be perhaps their forever home or maybe their home for many years until uh, later on in their retirement. What, apart from the cost of living, what are some of the key um, qualities would you say would make a, a good place for someone who is into his or her retirement years? Um, what about things like uh, shopping and uh, recreation? As a resident of Elliot Lake, you are limited because when you live in the cities, the conveniences are right at your elbow. You know, so you can think of, oh, and you can go, you can take a bus or you can walk to it. Where Elliot Lake, you can't go, you can't walk two and a half hours to Sudbury, you know, so, or Sault Ste. Marie. That's a bit of a hike. And so you have to, um, you know, put that into consideration. Um, however, um, you get, I've been here, like, like I said, two years and after a while you get used to not having the conveniences because you really do have the convenience, the main, the main ingredients, like for example, like your grocery stores, you need food. So we have that here. We do have some clothing stores. We have that. We need that. We have drug stores. We need that. So we have the basic necessities of life. Um, you know, outside, like I've gone. I have uh, my friend Chuck. We go hiking, you know, in the winter. I love the hiking in the winter because, you know, snowshoeing uh, or hiking. Um, I love the outdoors like that. It's really neat. And, um, but, you know, anybody who wants to, to enjoy the outdoors, I mean, Elliot Lake is the place to be. And I don't think Elliot Lake is a secret anymore. I think everybody's moving up here. <laughs> in terms of 
adjusting to a new place when someone in their golden years has moved to the place that they knew all the time. What uh, uh, I know what you're. I know what you're trying to say. I know what you're trying um, to say. I'll go over that. Um, one one thing is that you have to be ready mentally. You have to be ready to move up here. Uh, back in 2015, I wasn't ready because I was still working. And uh, then when I made the decision to move, I've had enough of the larger cities. Um, so for me, um, if anybody looks at my track record, I don't have a problem changing. Because I moved to I moved to Vancouver on my own, I moved to Toronto on my own, you know, New Westminster on my own. So for me, it doesn't bother me because I I'll, I'm the type of person that enjoys meeting new people. And uh, coming to Elliott Lake, yes, I didn't know anybody um, when I came here, but I figured well. So I got involved in many different aspects of the town, and I got to know people that way. And uh, not everybody can do that. Um, but I, I can. I have the ability. It's a gift that my dad gave me. I can talk to strangers, you know, start a conversation and really and just enjoy, enjoy talking with people. So what type of activities did you get involved in? Well, I first got, um, when I joined, I joined the bowling league and I met a lot of friends there. And then I joined Lions Club and I joined, let me think. Oh, I helped out with the Salvation Army, you know, with their bucket at Christmas time. So I got to know people there at the Lions Club, um, at the bowling lanes, got to know the owners of the bowling lane, nice couple, you know, um, got to, um, and then I got involved in a church here, Gentle Shepherd Church, and then I got involved in uh, helping their fundraising. I did the fundraising as well. I did the fundraising for the Lions Club before COVID. We did a lot of uh, fundraising. And um, so I got involved and I got to meet new people, you know, and they would we'd say hi to each other on the street. Um, I think that's, um, I just got involved and, you know, and you need to get involved <clears throat> because people will not come to you. You have to go to people, you know. And uh, so there's a lot of people out there that want to meet you. So you have to get out there. So volunteering has been key. In any t whether, whether you're in a small town or a large city, volunteering is a must and you can and the person can cho choose to decide how much they want to volunteer or how little they want to volunteer like i listened to like you know for example i listened to amanda roy on the in june the most the seniors month in june so i listened to all the every thursday and i found out some more information that i want to check out some more avenues of volunteering so it was really neat and i got to meet i got to meet you know people i got to know other people that i that i met when we did the gift card for the for the seniors project yeah i got to know those people again you know and so it's uh yeah it's it's just like it's a small town and then you know you, you know it's not that big a town where if you meet somebody here, you're going to meet them again. So it's like, you know, it's like you, you're saying hi to everybody on the street or, you know, stopping and talking to them. Yeah. And uh, in terms of volunteering, I, I just want to say how much we appreciate you and all of our volunteers because uh, um, you're the lifeblood of the organization. All the work that we achieve, it's because of you and um, others, seniors, other seniors like you and the youth as well who volunteer. That is so key to enable an, a, a diversity candidate to provide services to uh, well, individuals in the community. with your senior project, Celia, was a, it was an eye-opener for me for a lot of things I didn't know. And so that was, it was uh, good for me as well as it was good for the person I was talking to on the phone, you know. So yeah, okay. it, it was a win-win. Yes, wonderful. Always glad to hear that. And for someone who is considering moving from uh, wherever they are to a retirement uh, retirement community, uh, how important is it the, that the demographics, uh, how important of a role does the demographics uh, play? For instance, here in Elliott Lake, we have something like 60, uh, 50% or 50 or 60% of the population is uh, 55 and over or 50 and over is that mo a better environment for someone who is uh, a senior to move into rather than a bustling big city with all generations um, young many working aged I've always believed like 
um, cities are made up of small towns. Only you have to be able to find the, the gem in the city. And uh, once you find a gem, it's like commu there's like communities within communities, and you might have five communities, but that makes a city. So most, most of the people have come in from small towns to live in cities. Not that they want to live there. They sometimes, they have, they have no, they have the reasons. But um, it's, uh, you know, and to come up to Elliott Lake, you must like, well, everybody's saying you must like outdoors. Well, yes, you need to like outdoors, but there's a lot of activity going around town that if you don't like the outdoors, you know, to a, you know, but yeah. So I don't see a problem. It depends on what, like, uh, <clears throat> I can't speak for anybody else because um, each person is going to be different. Like I have a couple, I have a lady that is interested in coming up to Elliott Lake, but she's waiting. Um, her sister and her are waiting with her mom because her mom's not well. And, uh, but the first thing they need to do is contact um, uh, Elliott Lake, the retirement living, to find out if there's any vacancies. Right now, there's not much, if any. So that's what I meant earlier when I said Elliott Lake is no longer a secret because everybody knows about Elliott Lake now. So yeah, so I guess that's I guess what I'm trying to say it's it's booming, it's going to boom, but it can only it can only go so much because of where it's located. You know, it's we're like in a little valley, so you can only grow so much. But there's lots of things to do. When I first came to Elliott Lake, a lot of people here were saying, "Oh, there's nothing to do," and I'm going, "Are you kidding me?" There is so much to do here, you know, you just have to get out there and look for it. It is there, you know, but that is up, like I said, that's up to the individual, you know, to, uh, and as long too, you know, and if they, and the person that coming up, they have their health, they can get out and walk and go hiking, you know, there's, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, and if it's not meant for you to, if you come up here, you don't like it, then you go home to where you came from. <laughs> We, we spoke about the cost of living. We spoke about uh, the people that you're able to meet and interact with, whether it's uh, seniors or you need to be around young, bustling uh, crowds. And, um, something you mentioned here, the health care. Uh, how important is that a consideration for a senior who is thinking of moving and starting over? Uh, health care depends. Well, in Ontario, they have OHIP. Um, so the OHIP covers an awful lot. Um, if they don't have any other coverage, then they have to get coverage for themselves. I myself, I have OHIP and I also have, I can, you know, if I have dental problems or anything like that, it comes out of my pocket and then I get reimbursed by income tax time. So you just, you take one day at a time up here, you know, it's, um, so, I mean, because I don't know how other, each, like I said earlier, each individual, each senior is going to be different. They may have, because I'm a single divorced individual, there might, there's probably an awful lot of either widows or widowers here in town. So they might have a little extra coverage, that sort of thing. I mean, living in Ontario, you also, as a senior, you also get uh, Ontario Trillium benefits. And that depends on how much you make. And then, you know, if on your income tax, if you get GST, you also get that as well. So those are the things I'm getting, but I just, um, you know, just like everybody else, you're careful with your money and, you know, it's, you don't need your, your desire for materialistic things are not, um, <clears throat> I guess, let me explain it this way, because I went to Ottawa for two weeks and we don't have a Walmart here. And I went shopping in the Walmart store and I was sort of lost because I didn't really know because I don't have it here, right? And so uh, I went with my sister and we went here and there, but I came back and I goes, oh darn, I could have got that there. Of course, but I'm, it's, it's, I've been away from it for two years and, um, but I'm no, I'm no worse for the wear because I don't have the big stores. It's the convenience that we get used to and that tend to spoil us and thinking that we need it, but we don't need it when we're you get as you get older. That's that's so true. Uh, you know, you you find that in some year or some week you may not spend on anything at all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because your your life has changed so much. Whereas as a working individual, every day that you left the house, you would be spending on something. You'd be walking yes. by a store, and that 
grabbed your attention and you needed to felt you needed to buy it. But if you're not having to commute to work or walk to work, and you don't have all of those uh, um, commercial, well, you, can still, you can still do that in LA too by walking, but just not on such a big scale. <laughs> yes, yes, we have much fewer choices when it comes to that. Um, also, in terms of healthcare for a senior who is considering moving, um, what about the access to doctors, closeness to hospitals, specialists? How big of a concern would you say that would be? And for you, what what was that? Well, fortunately for me, I'm I'm in good health. I can get up, I can walk around, and uh, I don't re rely on any any um, items or anything. But um, that, because I, my health is good, I really don't do any research in regards to um, what I would need. But we do have a hospital here. Um, but because I don't use it, I have no need for it um, right now, um, I don't really know what they offer. You know, so, you know, and, but I do know we got a new machine in, in Elliott Lake because that way people don't have to go travel all the way to Sudbury. And that's a big thing when you're a senior, you know, you have to travel two and a half hours to go to Sudbury to get a, a special test where now we can do it here in Elliott Lake, which is a big bonus for us. That's, that's so true that we have the CT scanner and uh, lots of fundraising went on in the community to enable us to have that, which has reduced the burden of having to travel out of town to get uh, some, some of the tests. In terms of a senior moving either choosing to stay in a big city or wherever they are or choosing to move to a small town or retirement community, how important is considerations of safety, uh, crime and safety? Well, I'll say what I've always said. Uh, you know, a city is a city and a small town is a small town. Don't ever think a small town is immune to you no know, crime because it isn't. It, people are people and things will happen, maybe on a smaller scale, but things do happen in small towns and people have to realize that, you know, we're not, we're not, because we live in this bubble in this valley doesn't mean that we're protected, you know, in that sense. But yeah, it will become less, but, um, um, you yeah, know, it'll be less than normal, but I mean, it's, it's still here. But I wouldn't call, I wouldn't call Elliot Lake unsafe. It's, um, I've never felt threatened while I've been living here for two years. Um, I'm comfortable where I'm living. The people are nice where I live. Um, you know, um, I just, yeah. So everybody's friendly. Most people are friendly in Elliot Lake. Very few are not. Elliot Lake, you find, is a, a safe environment, perhaps safer than a big city. But, but like I said, you know, in large cities, let's take, let's take um, Vancouver, for example. You know, I found gems in when I was living in Vancouver for 10 years, I found gems like there was areas like you felt safe here, you felt safe here. So it depends. There are certain areas in, in, in a big city that you don't go to because you know they're not safe, you know, and every city has them. Um, and I'm sure every small town has them, too, but on, on a much smaller scale. You just have to be aware if you're going out late. Be aware of your surroundings. It's the same. It's no different. Just be aware. That's that's important, um, and that's good advice for seniors, whenever they are out and about, and even at home, to be conscious and aware of their surroundings, what's happening, um, situational awareness, as they say. One must have that to always be um, on alert for your safety. Uh, the final area I wanted to look at is uh, in terms of family ties and family connections. So this is a retirement community, uh, and like many small towns, there aren't many jobs for uh, working age individuals. So in most cases, if a senior has decided to move to a place that's more um, amenable for their retirement, it means that their family will not be moving to that place as well. How, um, how do you balance that desire to be close to family 
and the desire to have uh, the best retirement that you can have. From what I understand from different people I've talked to, you know, some families don't want don't want to to go, for you to go that far away. And in my way of thinking, this is not far. I mean, Vancouver's far, but where I live, you know, because my sisters are li live in all Ontario. My son lives in Ontario. My daughter lives in Vancouver. So, um, but the few people I've, you know, talked, well, it's so, it's so far away. But then at the other hand, they are happy to see you go down, but they don't want to make the trip up. So it's just, you know, so it's like, okay, you know, so, so it's quite interesting how the younger generation sometimes feels about, I don't really want to travel. That's a long way to travel. Eight hours is nothing to travel, you know. And uh, so it's just, like I said, it just, it, it depends on the individual. Um, I knew what I had to do for myself. Um, I needed to find a place that I could afford that I'm not going to be rent broke, you know, if I stayed in the cities. And so um, that's why I'm up at Elliott Lake, and it turns out that Elliott Lake I like. It's a nice town um, to live in. And um, the other thing about Elliott Lake, too, is even, like, I don't have a car, but don't let that scare you away because, I mean, um, once COVID gets, you know, like, because of COVID, it stopped. But AJ Bus Lines would run um, a monthly trip to Sault Ste. Marie, um, Sudbury, and bef before COVID started, they were going to um, start a bus trip to Espanola. And of course, COVID came and they stopped it. So that's a, like, so you're not really cut off that way. I mean, I do have friends that will take me to Espanola or Blind River or do things together or go to the show in Blind River and that. But I mean, um, you know, if you, like for me, I'll be honest, for me, if there was no bus service in this town, Regardless of how much, how cheap the apartment building or my rent would be, I would not come up here. They have the and the bus service is really, really important in this town um, because it, it, it's like, yeah, it's night and day. Because it, I'd be a lot of walking. I'd I'd be late. I could get into places because some of them are are away, quite a ways in town to walk. But you get used to it, I guess. But I mean, yeah. So that was one of the big, you know, that they had a bus service here because I would not. I've been up here if the bus service wasn't here because I don't have a car. Yeah. And yes, uh, I have good friends that will take me, but I don't always want to rely on friends. I want to be able to just go as I when I want to, you know? Yeah. Oh, I took up archery too. <laughs> Forgot that. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> as we, as we could. Yeah, that was fun. It, it's um, it's part of the um, rod and the rod and rifle club. And um, so we would go to the range and we had, I think, five or six targets to shoot at. I quite enjoyed it. I was actually quite surprised that I did like it. And uh, yeah, so there, it's, um, it's still going on as far as I know. And uh, yeah, so that was fun. And that way I got to meet more. I got to meet new people again as well. You know, so that was nice. Yes. Um, do you mind my asking at what age you took up archery? I took it up at, I think, a uh, uh, 74. I'm going to turn 75 in November. So I took it up last year, I think it was. The fall of last year. 70, right. I think 74. 74 or 73 or something like that. Yeah. Sharon, that is wonderful and you're an inspiration <laughs> that at uh, 74 you took up a new sport. And I think that's um, that's key as to why this has been a success for you. Um, being able to have the type of retirement that you want because you have that spirit, that adventurous spirit, which shows in um, that very fact that you took up this new sport uh, at age 74 and you've been able to make the move and start over in a new place uh, because that adventurous spirit drives you. Well, you actually helped me celebrate my last 74th birthday when we were doing the project. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. It was it was wonderful. We, yeah. we shared, we had a whole group of people and yeah. we shared a sweet moment there in the midst of COVID while yeah. we were um, providing support to uh, mm -hmm. vulnerable seniors in the community. I think that if, if I was, you know, if somebody asked me for the what I thought about LA Lake, you know, they have to, they have to make their own decision. Like I said, I, when I was ready, I knew I was ready to come up here. 
but uh, don't let other people, if this is where the individual, be it a couple or, or a single person, want to come up here, don't let other people deter you from coming up here. Check it out, and if you like it, and you know this is a place for you to be, move forward. You know, don't be afraid of change, because change, you know, changes in a lot of cases is really, really good. It's good for the spirit, and it's just good for, you know, just in general. So that's what I could say for seniors. <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much, Sharon. Really You're appreciated welcome. speaking with you on this, and um, you're an inspiration. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have been speaking with a lovely couple, Natalie and Hans, as well as uh, Sharon, who have told us about moving and starting over as a senior. I trust that you had a wonderful time as much as I did in exploring this issue and that you have got great insight on what it is like to make a big move as a senior. If you are considering a move in your retirement years, I hope that this has given you food for thought as you uh, look at planning for your retirement. I'm Celia Sanka, Executive Director of the Diversity Canada Foundation. This has been edition, an edition of the Golden Years Fireside Chat. Please do join us for another edition. Until next time, take good care of yourself. Bye for now.